Well, I guess I'll be I'll be doing this for the recording. Yeah, so um, I think uh, I, I, at least I can't remember uh, ever uh, being a talk having uh, been done about Apache Tech, but I think uh, Tech is a really important thing. Uh, that's why uh, this year I submitted something, uh, and uh, I guess the recording is going to be made available. So. Um, yeah, I hope uh, it's going to be uh, interesting for the one or the other of you. So, first of all, well, who am I? Well, my name is uh, Christopher Dutz. Uh, I'm a senior software engineer at a company called Matt. Uh, and the thing why I'm here is uh, I was a previous recipient of TAC. So I, I benefited uh, from what I'm going to be talking about. I'm also a committer of many Apache projects, a member of the foundation, and uh, also a PMC member of TAC. If you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, feel free. Uh, but, well, ApacheCon is all about learning things about Apache projects. Well, that's one of the things. Yeah. So I think this was uh, in Vegas, uh, in Berlin. Um, but... It's also about networking. So um, I have to admit, this is the part of the conference that I usually enjoyed most, uh, the, the part, the, the hallway track, uh, the things that are aside of the, the real hard facts, the getting to know people, the mm, creating connections with, with other projects, with other people, and just get, meeting friends. But also, well, uh, it's also about giving talks. Um, uh, even might be a chance to give your own first talk. Um, I had my first uh, talk at an ApacheCon in Denver in uh, 2014. Uh, as I mentioned, I, uh, I was only really able to do that because I was sponsored uh, via TAC. And um, yeah, this was a really great opportunity for me. Um, but last not least, uh, or well, one of the major things is it's also a great time to meet with your community. Uh, it brings the communities together. Um, you, we can finally personally meet. Um, uh, we can set aside differences. I mean, uh, we all know it. Uh, some of us are native speaking uh, 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 English native speakers, but not all of us are. Um, and sometimes uh, on chats and emails, uh, a lot of context gets lost. Um, so sometimes it's really great to just be able to meet up and just set aside differences. A um, little example, um, a little example of how uh, I uh, got to join uh, the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, it was uh, the Apache Con in Zinsheim. Um, it was just after uh, this Apache Flex project joined uh, the ASF. And, and as since time was nearby, uh, I uh, I went there. I took a hotel room, and I I was looking forward to meeting up with some people. And there I met Justin. Justin was one of the PPMCs of this new Apache Flex uh, product, and and uh, we, we we had a really good chat. And and he got me involved, uh, or or got me interested in the project. Uh, after the conference, I started contributing. Uh, and well, as I was new to Apache, I did a lot of things wrong from, let's say, a licensing perspective. Uh, and let's say uh, I, there, there was some time where I really hated uh, Justin. Uh, he, it, it felt like he was always just uh, sort of trying to annoy me. Uh, and, and he was just getting in the way. Uh, and and I, I, I really, there were really hard feelings involved. Uh, and I'll never forget that day when I knew, oh, gee, he's going to come to ApacheCon in Budapest. Um, so, so we had sort of one and a half to two years uh, where, where we never had a chance to chat. And the cool thing is, uh, it was a really great time. Uh, I met with him. Uh, we talked about everything. I, I got to know his side, uh, his point of view. Um, and uh, now I would uh, uh, call him one of my dearest friends here at the Apache Software Foundation. And this was just possible because we actually met. 
Um, but not only meet your own community, but meet other communities. Uh, I mean, this is also something that I really, really love about Patchycons. You get to meet all of the people the, of the projects that you you always been looking up to. You always wanted to get uh, involved in, but you you never really uh, managed to because uh, it was just too far away. Uh, or what I even love even more uh, is all of these projects that you never even heard about. Uh, and um, so uh, I usually come back from an Apache con with a suitcase full of new ideas, new contacts, uh, and real big drive to, 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 to start building something really cool. But also, come on, we're traveling. Sometimes we're traveling around the world. We, we also get to see new places or even try new things. Uh, I'll never forget my first U.S. pie in a place called Pie Factory. And uh, it was sort of like uh, other people would call it pizza-ish. Uh, but I remember it was just huge. Or, well, well, maybe just even if you just want to see people in Hawaiian shirts. Now, that's also something Apache is really famous for. So let's sum it up. Um, ApacheCon is about sharing knowledge. It's about learning new things. It's about meeting new people. It's about going new places, doing new, th new things, and having a lot of fun. But the problem is, uh, this is the sort of thing that not everybody can afford. Not everybody can afford just traveling around the world, flying to a different continent, uh, staying at a, an expensive conference hotel, uh, and whatever. As I mentioned, uh, when when I got first got my, my talk accepted, uh, I was expecting my employer to be happy about that and to send me there. Uh, yeah, well, it wasn't the case. Uh, he, he wasn't willing to pay anything. He, in the beginning, he didn't even want to give me the free time to go there. Um, so what happened then? Um, I was talking uh, to someone, I think it might even have been Justin, um, that what my problem was uh, that sort of I, I could have probably afforded to go uh, to, to Denver, but the problem would have been that uh, this would have sort of put quite sort of it would have completely limited what I could have been doing uh, the rest of the year. So no more uh, uh, going out for, for dinner with friends, uh, sort of that would have sort of cut my budget quite quite a bit. Uh, so that's when when he told me about Apache Tech. Um, Apache TAC is sort of the short form of the Apache Travel Assistance Committee. Um, um, and uh, one thing that's important, it's, it's a committee. It's not a, a project like uh, most of the, the other uh, uh, projects we're talking about. And uh, it has one mission, um, allowing people to attend Apache events, even if their personal financial situation might not allow that. Uh, that might, in my case, it was that the company didn't want to pay. And uh, as I said, if I would have still gone uh, on my, 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 my private funds, uh, that would have uh, completely grounded me uh, for the rest of the year. Mm. So what does Apache TAC cover? Uh, well, it's sort of like, think of Apache TAC as sort of a, a stipendium program. Uh, so... We we uh, we travel. Uh, we we cover the travel costs. We um, share, uh, cover the accommodation costs. We cover the conference fees, um, and uh, we even might uh, pay uh, subsistence payments. So um, yeah, usually at um, let's say if you go to a European conference, usually breakfast is included. Uh, sometimes even uh, dinner uh, is included or whatever. But if you go uh, to a US hotel, uh, I have never ever had something like breakfast included. So you usually have to go out and get something and that's usually not too cheap. Uh, so if you're sort of like just barely managing uh, to get around, uh, the subsistence payment will just uh, allow you to sort of like buy a decent meal for, for, for breakfast, for, for dinner or whatever. Usually during the conference, uh, lunch is sort of uh, included. Um, and this uh, we, we cover this uh, sponsoring not only for Apache events, but also, uh, let's say, events that are close to our communities. Uh, as an example, uh, there's the, the, the famous... 
uh, Fosdem uh, in Dem uh, uh, in Belgium, I think. Um, and a lot of Apache communities go there. And uh, there are uh, we have sponsored uh, this event uh, in the past, and uh, this is going to happen again uh, as soon as it makes sense sponsoring stuff again. Um, one thing I should mention uh, regarding the accommodation, um, we will be requiring uh, our sponsors uh, to uh, share a room. So this is sort of the least we can uh, ask of you. Um, so somebody uh, who is sponsored by uh, TAC, uh, we will be expecting to share a room with the same gender. Um, there are exceptions. We have had uh, people with medical conditions uh, that, that didn't allow that. Uh, so th there are exceptions to this rule, but in general, you can expect um, that you will be sharing a room. And I have to admit, uh, at first I thought, oh, gee, what's this going to be? And uh, I'll never forget when I, I think I shared my room with, uh, with Lewis. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, Lewis is as Scottish as it can get, I hope. Uh, he's not going to punch me for that. But I'll never forget when uh, when we first met. And, and uh, it was a real great time. It was a lot better than uh, sort of staying in my room all on my own. Um, so sharing room can actually be fun. Um, uh, you don't have to apply for all of this. Uh, let's say if you're... If you just say, oh, well, um, OK, the flight costs, they are pretty intense, uh, but the rest I can manage on my own, you can apply for uh, each of these four blocks uh, independently. Mm, OK. So how does a typical TAC trip look like? Um, so in general, um, you arrive two days uh, before the conference starts. Um, this is uh, mainly because uh, on the day before the conference, we usually have this uh, so-called TAC meeting. Uh, and uh, that's uh, where you get to know uh, the team behind TAC uh, and the conference. Uh, it's when you get to know your other uh, TACers. Um, and it's sort of where um, the distribution of a work uh, will be done. Because we will be sort of like expecting um, a little bit of... Um, Let's call it work. I have to admit, when I did it, I actually found it was quite fun. Um, but uh, we will be expecting you to sort of host uh, this, the the talks. And hosting means that you're uh, at a at the location of a talk a few minutes ahead of time. You uh, try to find out is the speaker there? Um, is the speaker all set up? Um, are there any technical issues? If there are technical issues, uh, while well, you sort of uh, go head out and get somebody. Um, so uh, we have to sort of distribute who does which talk. And let's say this is the part that usually takes up the longest time uh, at a TAC meeting, um, because uh, it, it always feels like everybody's just sort of like having a first look at the schedule uh, and trying to find out what he wants to go to. Because uh, usually you sort of like, if you want to go to a certain session, you just raise your hand, and say, "Hey, I'd love to go there," and it usually goes out quite what well, quite nicely. Sometimes, well, you might have to sort of miss that one session that you'd like to go to just to host another one. But in general, I think nobody's really been disappointed uh, with uh, not being able to go where he wanted to. Uh, the reason why it usually sucks if this distribution of talks uh, takes so long is that that directly after uh, the TAC meeting, we usually go to the so-called TAC dinner. Uh, and that's where we take you out uh, for, for a nice evening meal with uh, some good food and drinks. Uh, and that's where uh, you usually meet other people uh, from the ASF. Uh, so uh, you, you'll uh, you usually uh, we have some some people that are sort of uh, part of the board or part of the part of the incubator or well part of TAC. Uh, people you might need to be talking to uh, over the next few days or or just uh, to get to know other people from uh, the Apache Software Foundation. Well, and as soon as you're back. Um, well, we would uh, really like you to fill out a little feedback survey uh, where we just ask uh, what we did nicely, what we didn't do nicely, and uh, how we can uh, get better. Um, so as I mentioned, um, what we usually ask you to do is to host talks. And uh, in general, it's to sort of like 
check is the speaker there uh is the speaker all set up do, does, does he um does he need uh, any special dongles or is anything doesn't work uh get help if something doesn't work uh then usually uh, you, you have a little chat with the, the speaker if he wants an introduction, if you should say anything special about him. Uh, if he wants to uh, answer questions at the end, in the middle, or whatever. Um, and then when the talk starts, you usually just uh, go uh, to the front and say, hey, uh, next talk about uh, yada yada, and uh, introduce the speaker. Uh, and while the session, you usually do a little head count, so we know how many people uh, attended the session. It doesn't have to sort of like, if so, it happens all the time that somebody sort of pops in, um, uh, listens or, or, or goes out early. Uh, it's sort of like, just sort of like to, to have an average idea of how many people were there. Um, and depending on what the speaker said, if he wants, let's say, 10 minutes of Q&A at the end, uh, you usually give him a little sign. Uh, sometimes we have little printed signs with fi five minutes, uh, two minutes, or whatever. You just hold it up that the speaker knows uh, where he's at. Um, and when there is Q&A, we sometimes uh, record the sessions. Uh, so they are sometimes just plain audio. We've had that before. Or it's um, a video. But uh, if people ask questions, uh, in order to record that, we usually have little microphones that uh, you will be running around and passing uh, to the person uh, asking a question. Uh, but it's not much more than that. And uh, the cool thing is by introducing the people, uh, by speaking with them, you really lose sort of the fear of contact with them. Uh, you really get to know people that you would never have talked to before. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, when when I did my uh, when I did my um, TAC uh, trip, my first one, um, that was actually a really cool part. So that's about what how how a, a, a typical TAC trip looks uh, and what we do uh, or what 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 you will be doing there. But uh, we, what we haven't covered yet is uh, what we actually do because it's sort of like not just us sort of like sort of organizing things, uh, but we have to do quite a lot of work. Um, and what we do is sort of, first of all, uh, as soon as uh, there's a, a, a new event that we're sponsoring, uh, there is going to be um, an application system that uh, we, in the past it was a, a simple, uh, let's call it a web 1.0 uh, system uh, that... Um, that you sort of uh, filled out a, a survey where, where we're asking you questions about what are your what, what do you hope to get from the conference? Uh, what projects are you active in, uh, both uh, inside uh, of the Apache Software Foundation or outside? Um, and uh, it, it's it's a it's a, it's a little bit lengthy uh, survey. But um, we do uh, the evaluation of all of the applications and then uh, select the people uh, that uh, sort of receive funding uh, based on that. Um, we then, uh, for all the ones that got accepted, uh, we help them uh, get all the needed documents. Uh, if you're traveling from the, uh, well, in, inside of uh, the US, it's no problem at all, but just imagine if you're traveling from Europe uh, to, the in, uh, to the US, well, usually you can get uh, an ESTA. Uh, that's a pretty simple thing. But if you come from anywhere else, uh, sometimes getting a visa uh, for the US is a little bit tricky. Uh, and we provide you with the guidelines what should you sort of say? What should you probably not say? You, we provide you with the documents that you need uh, to, to apply all of and, and even tell you where to go to get these documents. Um, as soon as that's done, uh, we, we start doing the travel bookings uh, and other arrangements for you because uh, uh, every uh, TAC uh, recipient uh, usually comes from a completely different uh, place of the earth. So we have to find out which is the nearest airport, uh, which are the travel options uh, that we have, uh, and uh, do all of the, the booking uh, arrangements for train ride, bus ride, plane, 
uh, whatever is uh, sort of best suited for the, the situation. Uh, we also provide guidance uh, on uh, how you should do things. Uh, uh, Sometimes there are uh, special airports that sort of uh, you need to know about. Uh, and uh, sometimes you, there's, uh, yeah, if you're uh, arriving, please uh, please take this train, not the other one, even if it says it goes to a similar direction. Uh, so we, we, we provide you with everything that you need to uh, arrive at your destination. And uh, as soon as you're there, we're there to help you um, if there is anything uh, that might be uh, problematic on the ground. But sometimes, uh, well, we're called travel assistance. Uh, sometimes uh, you need assistance. So we've had things that, well, maybe maybe there is a flight canceled, rescheduled, or, or a connection flight was missed or something like that. So if anything happens uh, while you're traveling, uh, you just call us and uh, we'll take care of the rest. Uh, nobody has ever been stranded uh, when uh, traveling with, uh, with Apache TAC, uh, and we're definitely going to uh, make sure that's not going to happen in the future. So how does such an application work? Well, uh, as I mentioned first, everybody, every applicant fills out a questionnaire. The TAC team judges these uh, independently from each other. So uh, every um, TAC uh, judge uh, gets uh, to review all of the answers for uh, each application. And we have pretty strict guidelines on how many points uh, we uh, are allowed to give for which type of answer. So it's not just sort of like, we don't just decide on our gut feeling. It's really measurable. Um, and uh, so every uh, tag judge uh, goes through all of the applications. Uh, and this usually results in pretty streamlined, um, pretty streamlined results. But sometimes there are, uh, let's say, Specialities. Sometimes people say uh, they contributed for some open source projects, uh, and according to that, one gut judge uh, gave them the points, uh, and another one uh, did a little research and found out, well, that's actually not true. Uh, so that might be a case in which uh, uh, one judge has many points and the other one has uh, very few points. So in order to sort all that out, we have the so-called judges call. Uh, so all the judges. Um, meet online, uh, and we sort out the, the bad or the fake applications. So um, we, we've had, uh, sometimes uh, it's sort of really hard to uh, to grasp what, what type of application we've seen before. I think my, my favorite one was one guy who, uh, who wanted to travel uh, to Seville from Mexico uh, because he wanted to sort of like spoil the grave of uh, Christopher Columbus for being... Uh, uh, bad to his uh, ancestors. So, uh, well, uh, as you can imagine, those are the applications that probably won't make it into the final uh, selection. Um, then we also uh, have to decide on uh, which parts uh, somebody applied for will be covered. Well, usually, uh, if somebody applies for travel, for a hotel, uh, or uh, for the conference fees, uh, there's nothing really uh, to discuss about that. The only thing that sometimes happens is if somebody um, is actually an accepted speaker uh, at the conference, uh, then uh, even if he asks for funding uh, for the conference, well, there is nothing to fund for us. So, um, so sometimes that just gets cut. Um, subsistence uh, is, uh, I'd say, the only thing uh, where there's sometimes a, a bit of discussion about. Um, so in the end, uh, every application has a final result in, in form of points. Uh, in the past, we did that with uh, famous uh, Google spreadsheets, uh, where we sort of had the list of all the applications and how they scored. Um, and uh, what we do then is from we start from the top with the ones we probably uh, will be sponsoring. Uh, and uh, we have to do uh, quick estimates on costs per application. Uh, I think you can all imagine if it's a conference uh, happening in the US uh, and there is a US application, uh, the flight costs will probably uh, be a lot cheaper than if we fly some in somebody from Bangladesh or something like that. Uh, so what we have to do, and we, we ha only have a certain 
budget that we can spend. So we start at the top and sort of like sum up how much we estimate this will cost. And then there will be a sort of an, a cutoff where we say, okay, we can afford sending this many and uh, the other ones uh, we can't. And uh, this also results in quite some differences in how many people uh, actually travel with tech. I think uh, the biggest uh, group we've had, I think was something near 16 people. And I think the smallest one I remember was something near eight people. So that usually really depends on where the people come from um, and uh, how big our budget is. Um, yeah, so as soon as we've drawn the line, well, then we send out the, uh, hey, uh, be happy, you're accepted, or, uh, well, uh, unfortunately, we have to tell you uh, we couldn't uh, sponsor your uh, application uh, emails. So assuming you've uh, gotten an acceptance email, so what happens now? What do you have to do? Well, first of all, you need to accept. This might sound a little stupid, but uh, you won't believe how many people we had to chase uh, to sort of like, we want to give you the money for this trip. So do you accept? And all you had to do was say yes. Uh, but oh, well, sometimes people are on holidays or, or whatever, uh, just couldn't respond. Um, so as soon as you said yes, uh, will we sort out all the travel bookings for you? So will we do that together with you. So we will contact you uh, and discuss uh, what your preferences are. Well, of course, we will not be sending you business class. But uh, let's say uh, there is a sort of a corridor of uh, flexibility. Um, and we usually sort this out with you and then do the booking. We also sort out the accommodation uh, for you um, and provide you with all of the documents that you need uh, for applying for visa or whatever. Um, in general, we help you with any questions you might be having. Um, starting 2020, uh, we had completely new rules. Uh, this was really exciting when I heard about it. Unfortunately, uh, nobody ever uh, really got to uh, benefit from these because previously Apache committers and non-committers, they all sort of were in one big pot. Uh, they followed the same rules and they shared the same budget. So if we had a budget of X, well, that was split up uh, between uh, Apache committers and uh, non-Apache committers. Um, Sometimes this was a little disadvantage for the non-Apache committers because, um, well, of course, Apache committers, they already contribute to open source and that gave them sometimes some, some more points. Um, but now this is gonna be uh, changed because TAC got a significant new and separate budget for committers. So uh, what we had in the past, uh, what was used for committers and non-committers, well, this is now um, going to be used for non-committers. Uh, and uh, every Apache committer uh, is sort of entitled to re receive funding or request funding for um, at most one international uh, trip per year, um, at most two trips within a period of three years. So you can't go every year. Um, and at most one local event per year. We, we say if it's sort of like in the, in, if you live in the uh, US and it's sort of in the US, well, that sort of we, we consider local. Um, it's just sort of like uh, if I uh, from Europe went to a US conference, well, that is definitely not a local event. Um, and committers are not required to do TAC duties. But if you want to, uh, we definitely won't uh, keep you from doing that. Um, this all will start as soon as um, as uh, presence uh, conferences uh, will be starting. Uh, and it, just because you are allowed, I, I just want to lay emphasis on this. Uh, you are entitled to request funding. This doesn't mean that you will be guaranteed to get funding as an, a committer. We, we still have a certain budget and uh, we will be uh, sort of, um, we have to see how things work out. Uh, but in general, uh, we uh, were assuming that um, there also will be a, a sort of a selection process or something like that. But let's say uh, this is gonna be something we'll be dealing with uh, as soon as we'll be traveling again. Um, 
starting 2021, we also got a new uh, application system. Uh, I really wanted to take some screenshots, but every time uh, I, I wanted to do it, uh, there were, let's say, uh, little issues. So uh, right now, all I have is uh, the URL. Uh, you can visit the site as an Apache committer. You can log in with your uh, usual uh, Apache uh, credentials, but you'll probably not see very much because there is currently not a single application uh, available. Um, yeah, so uh, as I now mentioned uh, several times, uh, I was a previous attack recipient, and uh, so I wanted to share my personal attack story with you. So at ApacheCon Denver, I got my first talk accepted. Um, I, I already sort of got the money that I would have needed to sort of like book the flight and the hotel and stuff like that. But somebody told me about tech, so I um, applied. Um, and uh, I, I got accepted and uh, TAC paid for, for the trip. Um, um, the, the cool thing, however, was uh, because of TAC, I was able to, to, take, to do the trip. Well, I probably could have managed uh, any way, but as I mentioned, it would have been a, a quite a blow to my, my finances. But the cool thing was being able to speak at uh, uh, an international conference uh, made my former employee CodeCentric aware of me. So uh, I showed up on, on the speakers list and uh, I got a call. Um, I, I had my two job interviews uh, just before uh, going to ApacheCon. And while I was uh, in Denver, uh, I, I finally got the contract. Uh, and there I got a contract that allowed me to go uh, to all of the uh, following Apache cons uh, that allowed me to uh, contribute to open source. Uh, I think three and a half to four years uh, of my time at CodeCentric, I was able to sort of like work 100% on open source contributions. Uh, and this was all just possible because uh, TAC sponsored me. Uh, so, uh, Instantly after my first trip uh, with tech, uh, I decided to join in uh, and join the team and help other people perhaps have the same uh, experience as I had. Um, and uh, it really makes me happy when I see uh, previous attackers that um, I, I got to know on some conference who were pretty new to uh, Apache. And when I then see uh, how they uh, sort of evolve and integrate into the, the, the Apache uh, Foundation and how they grow uh, and uh, take up new responsibilities, it's always, uh, I'm always really, really happy with about this. Yeah, so some final words. Um, I think tech is something really great. Um, and I think it's something really important. Um, I personally invest a lot of time in it. Um, and just sort of to give you an idea of how long it really takes to do uh, the reviewing, well, we're not talking an hour or two here. So uh, I would sort of assume that thoroughly judging all of these applications usually consumes something near four to five, sometimes six full working days, um, because uh, I usually verify all the information that's been provided. Um, sometimes somebody says, I've contributed to Project X, but doesn't say what it did there. So I have to do the searching. What did it do? Oh, it's just sort of like, uh, is, it, is it a sort of a, a spelling correction, which is a good contribution? Or if he sort of submitted a, a complete, a, part of the, 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 the tool. Uh, there is still uh, quite a difference between that. Uh, so that's what, what I usually uh, do. Um, and the thing is, um, a lot of people, or, or we have had a lot of false answers in the past. Uh, and uh, as anybody can expect, um, confirming positives is quick. Finding out something is false, that takes a lot more time. Because you have to try, uh, maybe he meant this, and maybe he meant that, and you, you try out all the sorts of things. Um, and in the end, it just takes up an enormous amount of time. Um, so um, people not replying in a timely manner. Um, 
sometimes we've had people that we we, we got a great flight and uh, the travel agent said, uh, well, we need to book this till uh, this afternoon or this option is gone. Uh, and we just couldn't reach the person for multiple days. So then, then he comes, oh yeah, this is great for me. And says, yeah, well now the option's gone and we have to sort of like do this all over again. Uh, so people not replying in a timely manner, that is really, really frustrating. So if you apply uh, for a tech, you usually, we, we usually have a schedule on when you can expect to get a, an acceptance. So if you apply for a tech, please plan in to be available at the time when uh, the results are being uh, made public. Um, We've had people that kept on, ah, oh, come on, uh, can I uh, travel a, a day earlier? Or uh, can I move this a late uh, an, a day later because my aunt's birthday or whatever, stuff like this. This all, we, we try to do whatever we can, but this all just takes up time. And it's our time that we can't spend on anything else. Um, we have uh, things that I personally find quite annoying. Uh, some people applied for subsistence in the past because, because they said they can't afford their evening meals. Um, and as soon as they got accepted, uh, well, then they ask, uh, yeah, can I, uh, instead of uh, flying uh, to the airport uh, where the conference is, uh, could I fly to one 2,000 kilometers away because I want to do a two weeks road trip through the country before going to the conference, where I think, Gee, um, you can't afford your evening meal, but you can uh, afford a two-week uh, road trip through the country. Uh, well, I doubt so. Um, we've even had uh, one thing that I think uh, that keeps on popping my mind. Um, we've had tackers that sort of were bragging internally that they spent their entire subsistence money in the casino on the first night. Well, that's not what this money is for. You're taking money that other people might need. This is money that we plan in. And uh, as I said, we do the sum summing up. Uh, and this is money that we can't spend to send somebody else. So uh, this is things that, with which you can really make me mad. Or we've had cases where tech uh, applicants um, were volunteering to host sessions and they just didn't show up. They didn't show up for the entire conferences uh, till we found out they were just hanging around the, the sponsor booths or hanging out with some friends and having a good time instead. This is not why we're sending you there. Um, so please keep in mind, we, the people behind TAC, we have jobs. We are not travel agents. Uh, we do this in our free time. So try to keep our effort as low as possible. That being said, I really, really hope to see you guys soon. Um, if you want, uh, I'd be happy to uh, uh, start doing all of this tax stuff again uh, and meeting you at the next conference. So I really hope that um, the one or the other uh, might have found this, uh, this little uh, chat information <laughs> interesting. Uh, and yeah, so looking forward uh, to uh, meeting you guys. Yeah, so are there any questions? Yeah, travel, what is this? Yeah, it, I sometimes feel like uh, I, I, I don't even know what these strange things are that sort of draw these white lines on the, on the sky. Yeah, so um, I'll, uh, as I'm the track chair of the IoT track, um, this evening I'll be hanging around uh, the Birds of the Feather session of the IoT track. So if you have any questions uh, regarding TAC, uh, just join there and, and ask me. Um, I'll be happy to, to explain anything. Okie dokie. So. If there aren't any other questions, well, uh, then, uh, yeah. As I said, hope to see you guys soon. <laughs>